started COVID, uh, are we now at a point where Americans should be getting one COVID shot a year and that's it? Well, we're, we're just on the, the precipice of that. So I don't want to get ahead of where our scientists are here and doing that evaluation work. But yes, we anticipate that, it, that what COVID will become is similar to what we're seeing with flu shots, where it's going to be, you get your annual flu shot and you get your annual COVID shot. Um, and so that's where we are, we're going to. We're not quite there. Uh, yet, but stay tuned. I think within the next couple of weeks to, to month, we're going to hear more um, from our experts on COVID shots, but we expect a booster coming for this fall and winter season. We got to remember there's flu is circulating, RSV is circulating, and COVID is circulating. And, but the good news is, is we have vaccines and treatment for all. We just need to use these tools. So fall guidance on the next COVID shot should come in the next couple weeks. Yeah, we think, and then well, I would say early to mid September um, is when we'll ha probably have the official guidance. But everyone should expect um, in this fall time to get um, a COVID shot and certainly to get a flu shot. Flu shots are going to be available even sooner. So right, so for our, our kids and our um, uh, older folks, make sure you're getting your flu shot as soon as you can. CDC doesn't put out policy changes for schools, but should school districts be requiring COVID vaccinations? You know, look, this is something that different communities are going to think about in different ways. Um, what we want to focus on is giving everyone the information they need to make good common sense solutions. Um, there are opportunities for folks, right? We, we want folks to know that there are serious illnesses that vaccines have prevented for many, many years. Um, things like measles, right? Measles, unfortunately, is still circulating around and still kill, killing children. That is unacceptable in this day, particularly when we have a vaccine that can protect children. So we want to make sure that our kids are getting vaccinated and protecting them because we don't want to see any kid die needed, needlessly. You touched on this, but what is your level of concern right now going into the winter with the potential for a triple demic with RSV, COVID, and the flu? Well, look, we're looking right now at what's happening with flu in the Southern Hemisphere. Flu happens earlier um, for them in, in season-wise. So right now they're having a pretty, I would say, average flu season, which is good, good news so far, but we're watching it closely to see if anything changes. Um, but we know that RSV was pretty bad last year. We were seeing um, some of our pediatric intensive care units be overrun with kids who are very, very sick. The good news is, is we are about to see for the first time, um, and actually next week, the CDC advisory committee is meeting to review an RSV uh, immunization for infants for the very first time, which is wonderful to, for parents to have the peace of mind that we can give our kiddos antibodies, our, our baby's antibodies to RSV for the first time. Uh, we've never done before, so that's really exciting. Like as a mom, honestly, I wish I had had that for my, my girls when, when they were babies. Um, that's just another piece of scientific work that is amazing that we want to make, make sure folks know about. One of the challenges is, is there's a lot of distrust out there for vaccines. I mean, it has risen three in 10 adults, according to the Kaiser Health Foundation, say that parents should be able to decide not to vaccinate their children for measles, mumps, and rubella. Mm -hmm. How worried are you this number will grow? Yeah, I'm, ve I'm very worried about folks um, not vaccinating their kids. I mean, there are, like I said, we just were talking about measles. There's measles circulating right now in the world, um, killing children, and I do not want to see that here um, in, in, in our country, and what, particularly when we have an ability to stop it. And so I, I'd say, talk to your doctor, um, talk to your pediatrician um, about getting vaccinated. Um, and I, I, 
just think it's so important. I'm a mom of, of two girls. I got my kids vaccinated because um, I wanted to protect them um, from the circulating viruses. There's plenty of other things that are hard as parents that we can't do. This is one that we can, um, we can do to protect our kids. I'm just about out of time, but I want to fit in three quick questions. Uh, and I, the first one I know is probably not too quick, but I, I have to ask you about long COVID because I think there's a lot of people out there, and I've talked to some of them over the past few years, that have long COVID, they're watching people return to normal. Mm -hmm. They're not physically or even mentally feeling back to where they were pre-COVID. What do you tell them to those who are feeling left out and isolated and maybe feel there aren't enough resources for them? Yeah, well first to folks with long COVID, just know I see you. I know that this has been a struggle. I'm if someone very close to me and in, in, uh, um, one of my very good friends who is impacted by it. So I know how, um, how hard it has been um, for her. Um, and, and for others, uh, the, you know, COVID has significant impacts. It's why, it's why we worked so hard to protect people on the front end. When we did all that hard work as communities, all the wear, wa wait and wash, right? All of the, that was to protect folks. And there are some folks who are still recovering and we're learning more every day about, you know, how is this working in someone's body? What are the things we can do? Again, this is where partners um, across the government, I know, and academia are trying to do good work in this, but it's been tough. It's tough. It's tough work. Cliche question, but what's what now keeps you up at night leading to CDC? <laughs> Woo. So now, you know, leading something, uh, an, an agency with the breadth that we have and the responsibility to identify threats and respond to them quickly. Yeah, there's a lot that keeps me up at night, but the good news is know that I'm worrying about of those things so folks don't have to. There's a cadre of very talented um, and brilliant folks who are watching data, who are experts in different kinds of diseases that are responding quickly because it's all the things you don't hear about. That is what CDC is doing, which is great. I hope that you don't have to hear about those um, out there because we're worrying about them for you. Lastly, um, I touched on the distrust that is out there for the CDC. So I want to ask you, you're only three weeks on the job, but when people hear the CDC, what do you want them to think? I want them to think that there is a trusted partner who's looking out for me, who's looking to protect my health. Thank you to be, being my trusted partner and giving me common sense solutions to protect myself, my family, and my community. That's what I hope that they hear when they hear CDC is good, and good, accurate information that helps me with common sense solutions to protect myself, my family, and my community. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you.